Hi and welcome back to Reviving an Idler. I thought I'd put together just a very short episode just to sort of tie together some of the ideas and things that have been happening over the last few weeks, just to sort of keep you up to speed with where we are. Obviously I'm working alone uh, sort of in the region of 99% of the time, so uh, progress is always going to be slower when you're by yourself. Um, and as you know, we've had a lot of difficulties obtaining wood. We have done a lot of work on the boat. We have uh, replaced quite a lot of frames. We've done a lot of cleaning up, uh, scraping and preparing, and a lot of examining um, and thinking. A lot of behind the scenes thinking. And I hope you appreciate that it's the work that you see happening on camera is, is obviously only a fraction of the work that's getting done on the boat. So I'll just jump down, turn the camera about and we'll have a quick look about the boat and you can see what we've done and um, where we're going. And one of the first and most obvious things we've managed to do is get a pile of steamed ribs into the boat. Now you've seen me do most of that. And I've been working away at removing some of the ribs, every second rib, and that is to go ahead and do a batch install of our steamed ribs. And that is using this lovely oak that we got delivered yesterday. And here it is. Lovely, lovely lump of oak here. So just give you a nice close up there, as you can see, lovely and clear. And that carries on through the majority of the, the uh, flitch there. A couple of knots obviously, but very, very nice bit of wood. So a nice big chunk of oak. Uh, we've got a couple of slabs uh, on the top and the very bottom, which are fairly thin. Uh, lots of things we can use that for. Um, slightly larger chunk, we've got two 70mm uh, slabs, hoping to get some frames out of those. And three slightly smaller 50mm uh, slabs, and they're going to give us lots of ribs. And as you can see, we have already started ripping it down and planing it up and getting it dressed and ready. There was, however, a very interesting uh, question in my comments uh, on the last video there to do with uh, ribs and my use of the term ribs. Um, quite rightly, they pointed out that all frames or all ribs inside a boat are called frames. That is their, their true name. Um, what differentiates uh, these from the sawn frames is that they are steam bent and they're put in uh, laterally, they're put in after the boat has actually been built. So you have your station frames that you take your shape from and then these are secondary, these are put in behind that to, to give them strength. Like everything in life, uh, boat building has a, a myriad of terms out there. Now I've always known these as ribs, um, in other parts of the world that may not apply. Um, certainly up in the, the UK, these generally have the term timbers. This is a, a, a more common term for them is to be known as timbers. So steam bent frames are usually known as timbers. Uh, but for my experience in life, I've always called them ribs. It also helps for me as well to, to call them something different so I know what I'm dealing with, uh, whether I'm talking about the frames, in which case the solemn ones, or if I'm dealing with the ribs, uh, such as these, uh, which are going to be steam bent. So I know kind of what I'm dealing with. It helps. It also helps to keep things simple for you so you guys can follow what I'm talking about as well. And uh, certainly from my background of, of building smaller boats and uh, sea kayaks in particular, um, they're always known as ribs. Um, but good point, good question. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to comment on that one. Um, but you are, you are quite right in what you say. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all frames inside of a, of, a, of a boat are known as frames, quite correctly. Uh, but there are a few overlaps out there, so watch out for that. However, arguably one of the most important things that's happened in the last couple of weeks is the arrival of our cutting tools, our plugging repair tools. And that has allowed us to start plugging up some of the damage in the planking, which means we can start getting closer to doing the actual install of our sawn frames, our first set of sawn frames. So super excited about that. And that has meant that we have managed to start cutting some plugs and getting them in. 
So that's good. I'm pretty chuffed with them so far. They're fitting perfectly and they are looking good. And the damage on the inside is not too great. Uh, this plank here, marked with a cross, we're going to remove this entire plank. The reason being that there's too much damage there to worry about. So I'm going to remove this plank. As you come along, there's, there's damage in other places as we go along. And as we get towards the after side of the plank here, the gap opening up here is quite large. Whilst we could possibly get away with that, it's on the outside uh, edge of acceptability. Uh, so in all likelihood, I am going to remove this plank and remake that whole thing so it's a little bit tighter, tighter on that seam. And as you follow it down to where it meets the transom, there's been some damage and splitting here as well. So with the damage that's done to this plank, I am best just to uh, remove it. So jumping back inside the boat, you can have a look at some of these repairs here. Um, these are actually okay, actually okay. This one here obviously looks pretty nasty, but the damage is actually fairly limited to the surface. It looks a lot worse than it actually is. So I'm gonna cut a Gerald over the top of this one to remove the worst of the damage here. Um, but the plugging from the outside is to retain the strength in the nail fastening. So that's the reason we plug this first. We'll plane that smooth and then we'll fit a Gerald over the top of it. The rest of these nail holes, I'll give them just a drill out uh, to clean up any sort of rust that may be remaining in there, but they're, they're largely okay. These ones are just plugged as they are. And as we move slightly further down the hull, again, everything seems to be okay. So that's good. As you can see, we've also started removing some of the damaged planking on both sides. So we're going to start seeing holes opening up in the boat everywhere. Um, this blank here has got to come out up to that point there. And this plank here is going to be coming out to that butt block just behind that frame. So they'll be coming out in the next little while as well. And we've also got the garboard to take out on the port side. And that is to make it easier to install the steamed frames. And you'll also notice that I've left the feet of our steamed ribs in just now. And the reason for that is the angle of attack on the foot of the rib or the frame is different on each one. So in order to keep track of where they are, um, I'm just going to leave the actual feet in the boat in their pocket. And as I come to cut the new frames or the new ribs and take the dimensions off that foot, add that to the new one and then do them um, in order and that way we're not getting anything confused or muddled up. So the back sides of all these nails they've all been uh, cleaned out they've had uh, the planking cut the putty cut away from the outside so we just need to bang them through give them a wee scrape and a clean and then uh, we're on to building a wee steamer. Why do we need to build a new steamer? Well I'll tell you. Well, when steaming the last rib uh, that I installed, pulled it out and accidentally bumped it and it fell off the side of the boat. And being a hot plastic, it landed like that and of course bent. Left on the floor, it is just set hard in this shape. Um, could we fix it? Yeah, we could fix it. We could steam it and we could... Uh, you know, bend it back into flat shape, but it's not an ideal steamer as uh, as it is anyway. So we need something that's going to allow us to put more than two or three ribs into it, because I want to be able to try and steam a bit more of a batch, so I need a bigger steamer. This steamer is, is also just a little bit cumbersome. Um, because it's plastic, I needed to put a wood underneath it to keep it from flexing and wobbling as it got hot, and I needed to keep it wrapped in this uh, carpet as well to try and keep the heat in. So, Although the principal sound does a decent enough job, um, I could do better and I should do better if I'm trying to do a uh, batch steaming. So another quick and dirty uh, job coming up as we knock together a quick steamer. 
but we'll not linger on that too long. We'll try and just get that together and, you know, priority is getting the wood into the boat rather than building toys. So we uh, need to nip down to the shop, just get a couple of flat boards and uh, we'll knock together our, our quick and dirty steamer. Okay, so there's a couple of things I'm looking for out of our steamer. Uh, firstly, it needs to be able to take the heat uh, from the steam and it needs to be strong enough it's not going to deform or move around. Obviously we're putting steam into the box in order to heat up the fibres of the uh, oak that's then going to allow them to slip around and move past each other and allow us to take a bend out of them. So that's the purpose. So our steamer needs to be rigid enough that itself is not going to bend too much uh, with the steam on the inside. Uh, so we need to be built strong. It also needs to be a shallow enough volume that when we put the steam in there it stays hot. So we, don't, we can't have heat at one end of the steamer uh, and then it cools to very uh, little at the other end. So the, the volume inside the chamber needs to be low enough that we can maintain a high temperature in there. So that's going to affect the size of it. So I can't just build a huge box and put all my ribs in at once unless I have multiple sources of steam coming in there or a very, very big boiler. I'm intending to just use the same uh, wallpaper steamer that I had in the, the last machine. Uh, so that limits my volume to maybe three, possibly four uh, ribs at a time, which is plenty given that I'm working more or less the entire time by myself. It's four ribs at a time is plenty. I can put put one in every 15 minutes and I've got a 15 minute turnaround to put them uh, into the boat um, before I have to start reloading it. That gives me an hour to nip away, have a cup of tea, chill out and think about the next one. Now, how does that work for us? Well, luckily, uh, your standard timber out of a hardware store, timber merchant, whatever, just your normal dressed pine is strong enough to do the job. We've got a good thickness there, what's that, about uh, just under the inch, 20 mil or so, and as it's already dressed, I don't need to worry about doing anything to this. Just simply put your side panels on, put the wider panel on top, and then we've got a narrow rectangular box like that. So nice and simple construction, very quick, very easy, and will do the job. As it's solid wood, in a box construction, it's also going to resist the temptation and the desire to, to warp and move around. So I should be able to lay this on the boat or suspend it from the, the roof beams or something like that in such a way that it is easily accessible uh, by me whilst I'm working in the boat. So like I say, I don't need anything too big. The longest ribs I have in the boat are around about the 2 metre mark. So cut this 2 metres 10, that gives us a little bit of space on either side and that still allows the steam to circulate around the ribs but keeps the volume inside the steamer nice and low. So there we have it, a nice simple steam box. I've not felt the majority of this, it's a fairly straightforward thing to do, just uh, building a little box. Um, could be slightly narrower, that would be fine, nothing wrong with that though at the moment. Only thing to add is a little door for the front, using a little paddle bead because it's, uh, it's nautical, right? And putting a couple of holes along here and threading in little dowel sticks. So a bit of 6mm dowel every now and then, just so that the rib when it goes in doesn't sit flat on the floor, it's actually going to be raised up and that allows the steam to get all around it. Okay, so the dowel sticks will just take it slightly off so that the wood's not lying flush against the bottom of the box. Outside of that, put an extra little hole at the bottom so we can put the steam pipe in. And that's it, job's a good one. Get this mounted and let's start getting some ribs into the boat. And lastly, just down here, close to the earth, where it's a slightly more stable moisture environment, we have our next two pairs of frames. And they can just sit down there just now. It's a nice, stable, moisture environment. There's not too much of a change. Uh, that's primarily because it's an earth floor beneath this, so the, the ground doesn't dry out as quickly as anywhere else. So even though it might get warm in the air, there's plenty of moisture in the ground, and that stops the wood from drying out too quickly. Um, 
Um, there has been a couple of, of comments uh, regarding this uh, approach to, to doing um, our sawn frames. Um, I totally appreciate that the drying large blocks of timber in flitches is the way to go. That's by all means the, the, the best thing we can do. Um, I simply don't have that option at the moment. Uh, the time scales that we set ourselves to try and get this boat uh, prepared um, versus the available lumber, uh, which as you know already is, is, is very limited. We're, we're really struggling to get timber. Um, so we have to use what we've got and what we can get. So this is the best way that I can see of getting our lumber uh, prepped and ready and to a state of equilibrium. Again, like I said in an earlier video, I'm not trying to get dry wood. I, what I'm looking for is stable wood um, or as stable as possible. So if it's sitting down here next to the earth, um, it's going to be acclimatizing to the moisture content of the boat. Okay, now the moisture content of the boat is going to be similar to the moisture content down here. She's been sat here for almost a year now, uh, so the moisture content is going to be fluctuating with the seasons, but it should remain slightly stable because of the uh, earth floor beneath it. The framing that we have down here uh, is hopefully going to be getting closer to that of the boat than to that of the air. So yeah, so that's the reason that I've gone ahead and uh, used this method to uh, prepare the lumber for the frames. But that's okay, they can sit there almost indefinitely at this point. They're not getting rained on by fresh water, and um, they're just going to be getting the, the moisture content of the air uh, moving around them. So as soon as we've got the previously cut and uh, fared frames installed into the boat, we've got some more solid strength back into uh, once we've got the plugging and the frame in, we can then start looking at removing the next frame, cutting and installing that, get that done, then the next frame and we'll move frame by frame uh, along that line as we go. So that's about where we are just now with the boat. Um, I just want to say a big, big thank you to all of you for your continued support and patience. Uh, it has been a fairly long drawn out uh, last couple of months. Um, falling behind on my initial plans of, of, of where I hoped to be at this point. Um, but that's, unfortunately, it's just something we have to live with. It's, it's just something that's out of my control. I can't affect uh, global pandemics or I, I can't affect um, political changes in the, the structuring of Europe either. So these are, are things we just have to live with. Uh, I am so pleased to say that I think we're back on track. Um, as you've seen, we have the wood, uh, we have our tools, and uh, I think we're in a position where we can get a really good run at the boat. We've got at least uh, two frames sort of sitting there, they're ready to get installed. We've got these two which are ready, so that's three frames in total, and the big bulks of timber I've got there, uh, I think we'll do the remaining two forward frames um, using laminations. Now we'll talk about that in another episode but I think that we can see the re remainder of our sawn frames done from the stock that we have and we definitely have enough stock to do all of our uh, steamed ribs as well. We'll get them all sorted out uh, from this bulk of timber. We even have, believe it or not, some deck beams out of this as well. So we're moving forward uh, quite dramatically from this last order of timber. So chuffed to bits with that, really, really pleased. So hopefully the next episode, you're gonna see a big, big change in the boat. We're not gonna be staring at me talking and waffling about um, excuses and nonsense. We're actually gonna see some solid work done in the boat. We're gonna get um, a lot of ribs in and we're hopefully, I'm really hoping that we can uh, show you the fixing of these uh, frames and get them into the boat permanently. So that's what I'm aiming for next week. So once again, a huge, huge thank you to every single one of you. Huge thank you to the patrons out there. Um, outstanding, just outstanding. You're, you're legends. Thank you so much. Um, and until next time, take it easy and I'll see you later.